Okay, so we're back. I made a whole bunch of things, as you can see. I really uh, went far with this. One of the things I was thinking is, how can you create movement in your artwork? Um, so that's another thing that adds interest when we talk about, oh, what makes art good art? Well, lots of things, line, shape, color. These are the elements of art, um, but how we use them, these are the principles of art. And we are using our shapes to make movement. So as you can see, they're wiggling, jiggling. I'm not done though. I wanted to show you the next most important part of the sculpture. Um, when you're creating movement especially, or even just putting this together like a puzzle, you need to use problem solving. Uh, you need to make sure things are gonna fit the way you want to. You wanna make sure they're gonna attach the way you want to. Sometimes things will not work out and that's it. You could put them in the garbage and you could take a new piece. So I made this um, flag for my little uh, sculpture, which could be lots of things. You know, it could be a little city, it could be a playground, whatever your imagination wants it to be. So I made a flag with some scrap papers that I found just kind of laying around here. And you know, how am I gonna get this to stay? It seems kind of difficult. If it was too tall, it might kind of fall over. If it's too short, you won't see it over my wall. So I had to cut it to a good length. I added glue on the side and of course, one of those good old tabs. Um, and then this way when I attach it, I know it's strong because it's going to first attach to the base, um, but second, it's also going to be attached to the wall here. So if I kind of give you an up close look, it's attached to the ground and to the wall. So this is like building a house, boys and girls. Uh, how are you gonna get your house to stay? The second that first storm comes by uh, and the wind blows really heavy, how are we gonna make sure that building is strong enough? How are we gonna make sure it's gonna be strong enough to fit a whole bunch of people inside of it? Um, so these are the different ways that people use every single day when they are building things. Think about that condo that they just built across the street from our school. Um, how much problem solving went into that to make sure that it is strong enough to hold all those people that will be living in it. So very important stuff. Um, I saved some of my last assembling just so I can explain it as I did it. Um, this movement that I created here, this spiral, which I think is pretty fun. It's like a spring. Um, that could be a fun thing if this was a playground for kids to be kind of jumping on. So what I did was I took a square piece and I started from the edge and I just started turning, well, turning as I cut. So we talk about this in class all the time. In fact, I kind of want to get rid of my corners first. Um, but we talk about this in class, you know, the scissors kind of just stay where they are. All they do is they open and close. The other hand, the one that holds the paper, that's the one that's doing all the heavy work here. It's turning as we're cutting, turning as we're cutting. So then of course, once I speed up and I make my way to the middle, then we are going to see that it is left with something like that. And again, how are you going to get it to attach, um, in a way that will stay? So that was a big problem I had to solve. Um, I thought it'd be fun to show this. This kind of reminds me of like a little fireplace or um, something like that. So all I just did was took a piece of paper, fold it left, fold it right, fold it left, fold it right, fold it left, fold it right, over and over again. This way, then that way, then this way, then that way, like a little accordion. And when you open it up, you got something like that. And the cool part is your tab is already built in. So just a dot not a lot, turn it over, press it down, and hold it. I made a chain link, which I thought was cool. Let's say this, again, I'm going with this playground idea, um, something that we could maybe possibly swing on, more movement that I've created here. Um, and I just made a little chain link. Some of you might be familiar with this, but if not, you need strips of paper, roll it into a circle, right? Just add a little, dot on the end. Look at my dots, they are so small. For small pieces of paper. And then of course, press and hold it for a moment while that one's going. Gonna get number two going. Just a dot, not a lot. And then we're gonna stick it through this one. And then we'll be turning it over and folding it. So you just repeat the process and it's gonna give you a chain link. 
So that's how I made this one here. But then I said, how am I going to attach it? It needs to be up high. If it's just on the ground, it's not going to wiggle around. So I made myself a little table just with a little strip of paper, tab, tab, fold, fold, which also moves side to side, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and then I made another little table. It's kind of what it looks like. And I stacked them, glued them, and then I found out that this needed help being attached. So I added a little piece like that. So this is a lot of problem solving because you're gonna find that as you go to put pieces together, they're either gonna be too heavy, too tall, too short, um, not able to be glued for one reason or another. So you, the artist, are going to need to problem solve. So like this, you know, I could see it starting to kind of fall off already. So this might not work, All right? I'm gonna try and pinch and hold it, but you know, it might not work. So then I have to figure out how am I gonna get it to. So at the end, look at all this movement I've created. Something we can kind of swing on, jump on, curl around on like a little roller coaster. So I'm excited to see the different ways you use these techniques. And don't forget, you can always add um, marker or details onto the artwork right as it is. So use everything you can find in your house. You could do as much or as little as you want. So you could do a small piece of cardboard like this. You can start to use bigger pieces of cardboard. Um, you can even use old cereal boxes. So really just look around. Whatever you have is gonna get the job done. But most importantly, have fun. Um, and I can't wait to see what you make, how you get it to wiggle, jiggle, and move around, and how you solve those problems that you encounter as you go to put it together, okay? You can leave any comments below with fun things you learn, things you wanna share. And again, I just wanna give a shout out to all my students. I miss you guys so much. I can't wait till we could be back together in the art room and doing all those fun, magical things that we do all the time. So I'll see you soon. Happy creating.